Thank you for tuning in. Um, and what we'll be talking about, I'll be starting doing uploads, just talking about random little situations and issues of the world, you know. Thank you for tuning in. Right now, you're tuned in to Jesus Nano, which we cubic lies, problems of the world, and issues. And basically, we um actually bring, we, we, we try to keep topics relevant that should be relevant, like reform of national security and cyber crimes, uh, delayed reactions, and problematical systems and also on um, the reform of um, AI intelligent which means that we have to go back and restudy and see how smart AI has gotten and what has driven AI to become so smart you know because you, you and then you must actually we must actually get deeper into the cyber world to find out the two sides that exist the good and the evil side of the, the internet, you know, the dark world against the world, you know. <clears throat> and with that being said, that would lead us to basically the topics which we will be discussing of how you would label and actually keep one separated from the other, which means you would have to basically start off with two different think tanks. These think tanks will consist of the pros and the cons of the cybersecurity network that is in that is in place, and actually the pros and cons of the cybersecurity reform that we will put in place. And it will actually have to be a constant thing where we, we look over things or else it'd be like corroded bridges where nobody knew when the bridge would collapse. But somebody knew that they didn't go back in time or into the sheets to actually see when was the last update or the last, uh, uh, what can I say, uh, when was the last review of the construction towards the bridge that collapsed based on because it wasn't reformed. Like you, you, you have to have these companies within these entities that the entity knows it exists but they don't know the mechanics behind the company that would that would would um have artificial intelligence at a standhold, you know. That's I feel like that's how God creates entities and God creates um governing powers based upon um certain entities knowing and certain entities not knowing. Because if an entity was to know it would gain the access of all that knowledge and then use it to the best of its ability to go against whether it deems right or wrong. And then you would hate to have a smart computer that actually focus on gathering all the evil in the world just to use it to destroy us. This is the ult that is the ultimate ego outside ourselves that actually exists beyond what man thinks about on a daily basis because man really we were, and that's why we depend more on God because we really was made to be to be simple a simple creation because we know we were made in, born into a world of sin conceived in sin you know and then we step out into this world and um it's time when it can be biased to us it can be biased it can be prejudiced racist it can be discriminated you know, um, and that's the thing about AI looking at discrimination and man looking at discrimination. Because AI can take certain discriminations and see that it's no discrimination because it, it, it doesn't have the emotions of being a human. It doesn't have the right to be a human. I mean, humans are like, they're born with that. It's, it's a universal law. That a human will feel pain. You will feel pain once you get here. You will actually feel pain. But the thing about it's 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 so much pain that it's starting to be systematic, which means that people are somewhere are actually getting paid to live off the pain of others, to deny others access to things that are already here. Ain't nothing under this sun is new. It's time capsule. 
this time capsule. The only thing about it is like, if you if we be more obedient towards God, will we'll get it quicker. We'll we'll already have it. We'll. But the thing about it, man, through time has always looked beyond the face of God. Be all, we always looked upon the knowledge of God. We we always try to look past something that is already freely given to us. And this is what this is what we constantly uh, battling. We're constantly battling what we know is real and what God says is real. But if God says it is real, you should know it to be real. For his his words don't lie. I can tell you the truth. Like if it's very lie, I wouldn't even be here right now. And I know many other people that would actually if even if they don't like me, they know that right there is a the truth. Even they like my enemies like would actually say that. That if God didn't exist, they wouldn't be here. You know, and that's not even trying to describe God or anything in John. They just knowing that it was a creator outside of man thoughts, actions, words that actually created all this for His glory. I didn't know that sin brought upon a frequency and a vibration of a lower state that will always. Um, what can I say? It will always drain. It was all. It will always drain. Sin was made to drain because, see, you can have sin around and and not know, but it's gonna be a time when God reveals something that isn't right. You you're gonna feel like it's it's not right. He's, he's gonna put you in a situation where you know, like, no, this ain't how it's supposed to go. Because he's trying to actually bestow it in you that you already, that he has gifts, talents, treasures in you and things in you that you already know. You just have to move out the old and the unuseful things. Just like it's unuseful programs that, are, that still exist inside the matrix or the stimulation of which we coexist with the try and call it duality, which is reality. But um, to actually see duality, that means you sit on a different realm and look at things. You know, um, I feel like uh, with Christ, you know, him being the way allows us to see a, a different point of view. Like, regardless of I win the argument or the discussion, I still shouldn't put up a barrier where I can't learn more. You know, it's, it, it should never be a time in life where you, you get to stop at growing because growth actually comes from the inside it actually comes it actually comes from the wanting to know more but also to know that it is more because you're the god the lord jesus christ the one who died for our sins then just died to keep us um captive by our sins he died to release us from our sins which means release us from the, the feeling of us having to be so cursed that God don't want us to actually uh, perceive, receive, and um, actually uh, be humble for what he has already provided, which is life itself. From the breath of life, from the looks of life, from the feelings of life, from the ups and downs of life, you know, it's all part of the, the book of life. You know, in the book of life, people think that God just going to have a book where it says nothing about mistakes. Where it says nothing about, but, but the thing about it, God wouldn't even like that book because it wouldn't teach nothing. And it, it wouldn't show his glory. His glory is when we're weak. Man himself, if he's strong, he he's just like, just like Jesus said, you know. Those who want me, they're you know they're not healthy. It's some it's an illness that they know that I can only fix. They they may look for things to like just coexist with it, but it won't be a thing that actually is relevant to them, except they come and see who is Jesus, who is Christ, what is what what is he all about? And then most people that come and see him. They think it's gonna be oh no, nah, it ain't gonna it's gonna be a little revealing and you be like the whole time, right there in front of my face. Tell me something. When when Judas wanted to to sell Christ out, 
Whoa, where was he when he did all this? Right in front of Christ's face. <laughs> and Christ was right there. The person he was going to betray right there in front of his face. Like, and, it, and, it's so, and, and then it brings you back to a um, deeper understanding of, dang, Christ got sold out and he still loved the one that sold him out. Broke bread with him. Ate with him. Like, I'm going to, matter of fact, I'm going to give you a head start. I'm going to give you a head start for you to go run and tell them. Not knowing that when you go tell, you, you're not doing nothing but actually just being deceived. You're being deceived. Because the thing about it, what, what Judas didn't think about is that if this is the Savior and you went with him, you see miracles, and he done did awesome, great things. And you sell them off for 30 pieces of silver. Your mouth messed up. Even your mouth messed up. Your head is already messed up. Because you you try to sell the save out. And then the craziest thing, the second thing about it is uh, for the for the amount you sold them for. Well, you could have got more than that. You probably could have gotten church. With the people inside it. <laughs> but... But the great thing about Jesus being in that situation, God had a story in heaven where Judah, well, well, he had a story in heaven where it showed like how much the son loved the father. And the reason why the father loved the son, because that, that's that's a great that's a great glory. That is a great glory and that's something to be praised throughout life. Because it's not every day that you're gonna wake up and have the strength to conquer the real. Nah. Most of the time you're not gonna have the strength to conquer the real. You know why? Because Christ already did it. So why would you why would you want to go put on some sandals that you know you can't wear? Cause guess what? Them sandals ain't even there no more. You can't even find them sandals. So why why is you looking for those sandals? Why are you not looking for the, the life that already exists that Christ has? And see when when even when Christ wants to do like new things in the earth, it still be a representation of what he already has done. It's just in a new perception. You know. <clears throat> and then the thing about with our own opinions. We must get over this stigma. Of people having opinions that feel like they're facts. But they're still just opinions. You know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care how many doctors you have behind this one opinion. It's still an opinion when it comes down to it. Because when you lean something to one side and it's and, it, and you can base it off on this is the truth, but the thing about it, this could be the truth too. That's like saying law and anti-law. They both truths. They're both truths, no matter how you look at it, whether you hate one and love the other and love the one and hate the other. They're both truths. The only thing about one outweighing the other is either the lack of motive. Or the pressure of evidence. <clears throat> These are your balance scales and justice because this this is what actually um, brings truth about. When I tell a person, without God, you wouldn't even know what truth means. You wouldn't even know what truth was. You wouldn't even have a representation of what is actually truth. If God's words wasn't true. To this day, like he said, it will be forever. He said everything will pass away, but the words in his book should not pass away. Why? Because if it's truth, what do you have to fix about it? If it's if it's perfect, if it's perfection at its at the highest value of life, what does you what do you have to change? That's like you trying to um break down the elements of oxygen. Why? When it's good as it is. Is is good just how God made it. It's and and that always come back to us as human beings. Like some of us go so dramatic in viewpoints and stuff and jump when it's like why when you just you're beautiful just how God made you. You're smart just how God made you. You did. Man, you're a king how God made you. Woman, you're a queen how God made you. Son, you're a prince how God made you. Daughter, you're a princess, how God made you. How God made you. Which means everything that you add on is just an add-on. And it's temporary. 
it's temporary. I know it's temporary, man. And then most of the time when you had all that, you you so glad to let it go, cause you cause you understand that it is a deeper, deeper set of principles in a in a higher value. It isn't about what I can gain or what I can show to each other. It's most like what I can have to give to others out of love, out of love, because the whole world gonna give you hate. You know, the whole world will give you hate. And then you, you'll, you'll be subdued by that for only so long until something hits you and make you feel a type of pain where you like, the real lie. Damn, man. You know, because you like, man, I'm, I'm human. I got to go through my ups and downs too, but at the same time, you know, God, God does exist. And he fights for us, whether we know it or not. It's just, are we willing to, um, to just to just be a little bit more obedient. I know I can't make the world perfect, but I can make it a little bit more obedient where the obedience will work out in your life. And it might not work out in your life as it works out in mine, but it will actually have a momentum, something that you can actually build foundation. It's not until when man goes back and remember that without God, nothing is possible. So why not do something with God? And see how and see see what is possible. See what see see what he can make. See how he can touch things to make the impossible possible. Cause that's what we, that's what that's what the real consists on. That's what we actually live off of. That's the type of faith that we live off. The type of faith we live off of is knowing that he is who he is, and we are who we are. We're not, the whole nation. I, I the whole nation can can um. Uh, Basically, sit down right now, cause I'm actually just standing up and saying what God said. He said, let, "Let them always be remembered. They are nothing but men. Nothing but men. I don't care how much money you got, how many buttons you can press, how many calculations you can do, how how many uh certificates. How many? That's all good, and you worked hard. Thank you. You know, thank you for the great ones and that did that. But remember." All this is nothing if you ain't did it for God. If you ain't do it for God, you did all this for nothing. Because everybody has to actually understand that we ain't nothing but me. The whole nation. Yeah, the whole nation is a whole nation full of people that thinking they're so powerful and they, they can control. But even God tells them, like, I'm the one that sits the highest. Why do you sit the highest? Because... It's not about you exalting yourself, you actually um, existing in the real where you feel like, oh, this is no. You exist in this real knowing that you must coexist with your enemies. Because it's going to come a time where you think this enemy is your enemy, but nah, it's not your enemy. It's just so scared that, <laughs> that, that when you motivate him, you irritate his demon. Just like, just like when you get criticism, it, it, it irritates your demon. I, I use it sometimes. I, I know people come around to, <laughs> to criticize, but the thing about it is, like when you know that you're doing something for God, you you work at it. You you welcome it all because it's not it's 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 not nothing that you thought you were gonna have and put over another person. No, it's kind of really like having like something that. That is like a um, a tool to be used to help others, regardless of what situation they're in in life. You know, and I rather I rather people put ambition, determination, motivation in that. When I don't have it, and when I'm feeling down, then when I have the real, because I can have the real and still look at it as having nothing and actually um, portray my actions out into the real as. It's nothing to live for. But I, what type of, it's nothing to live for, what I want to teach that to the next generation. They will, they will make them nothing but a bunch of hell babies. Raising hell, don't know why. It's not until we actually, actually do a lot of reforming. I feel like this is the stage of the greatest reset because it's a lot of reforming that's going to go on. And it's not the reforming where they break everybody down so much. No, it's type of reforming where we have to put certain people in certain right positions and take some of these people out and actually divide them. 
because the thing about it, okay, see, what we must, it's a higher level that sits above, and they have to see how things go, and they know you got bad, and you got good, and you got the just don't know, okay, we don't care about the just don't know, because they're going to find out, they're going to figure it out in the meantime, but the good and the bad, you got, you got to look back and see how, and you're like, constantly thinking that, okay, if we get rid of the bad, and it's going to be all good, when it's not going to be that, it's, it's always going to be some bad, it's always going to be some good, so what you must work with is the willing effect in the two, you will always have a family or somebody that's so, so tired of how this way is going on this side, and they're so tired of how this way is portrayed to go, that they're going to get on, and this is what's going to make the Christ kingdom effective, because it overtakes both, because if you leave the good by itself, it would actually turn into evil because it would fill itself off of the pride of what it does for others. When it shouldn't be that, you know, that's why it's a balance. You can be good, but if you don't have the humbleness in your heart, all your good is not going to be, it's going to be for nothing. It's going to be for nothing, you know. Just like you can be evil, all the evil in it is be what? Nothing. So... So you must get take the two and show them that it's a, a better way instead of just seeing the right side of things or the left side of things. How about we see the fullness of Christ in all and then guess what? Both sides will be more home. And in and, 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 and the Bible it states that the only thing that separates the good from the evil is the gifts they give. Evil don't know how to give good gifts. <laughs> They don't know how to give good gifts, and most of the time they don't even know how to accept good gifts. <laughs> you know, they've been to cut you out. Hey, what you give me this? Like, dang, my bad. Tony, I ain't gonna get you no more sweaters. My bad. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you have to like actually sit back and um sit sit back and um let God mold you into who He's trying to um present to the world. Cause every time you you're out there, or you ever in anywhere you're at, to actually and you love God, you're presenting God to the world, you know. And nobody has to tell you that you're presenting God to the world. You're gonna know. He's gonna show up. He's gonna do something. He's gonna, because um, us as humans, we must know that we can't do it all by ourselves. We can't do it all by ourselves. We can't do it all by ourselves. And you know why I say it like that? Because it be, I be having to remind myself. <laughs> like, <laughs> but, I, but the craziest thing with me is like, I'm not a Superman. I can be Superman when I have to, but that's usually when I feel like the real is in trouble. And God just like, he gone ahead and... But other than that, I'm like a little cartoon. Like, I'm super tired of just chill out, you know. You know, make, make people laugh and get along with life because it's, you know... uh people are out here and they're still feeling certain types of pains even though it's one pain it's different types of ways to feel it you know and, and, and the thing about it it is hard to deal with certain pains that you can't explain or you just can't even if you did try to explain it that still wouldn't make you get over it you understand like you'll just be aware that oh it's this type of pain and and with that being said keep the faith um don't never let the hurt of this world determine your outcome when because when you believe in christ all you have to do is start walking with him and he'll accept you he accept you in your crumbled ways just to just to actually iron you out just to get you straight he accept you in your crumbled ways because he has a plan and when his plan start in faith it, it, uh, you wouldn't even you you wouldn't even believe you wouldn't believe you wouldn't believe because it, it it takes it takes more than just sight to walk with God. You gotta have the faith. You gotta have the belief that He does exist, and then you gotta have the patience in the time when things go wrong. You know, things go wrong because I kind of feel like that when things go wrong in a believer's life, that'd be like God putting them on stage to show them like this this is how you do it the righteous way. This how upright. This is how you, you can become alright. 
you know, I, I don't, and the craziest thing is like the story of Job, the, the greatest parts of the story of Job was when he was suffering. When he was suffering and his friends, his family, everybody was denying him. Because they were like, this cannot be God doing this to Job. This cannot be God doing this. It wasn't, <laughs> this the crazy thing. It wasn't God doing it. It was God allowing the devil to see could he play tricks on his mind to get him to walk outside of what God has already given him. But the thing about Job, he knew one thing. God. You already knew I couldn't do this, <laughs> so so I know you exist. <laughs> I know you exist because you. I've seen things in my life. It's just I can't explain. So I I gotta give God the glory. Cause I feel like that's why He put things in our life like that, so we can so He can remind us. It's 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 like His little way of reminding. Like I see you, <laughs> like 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 how a father would a father would do his his kids. You did put them in a situation where be like I see you. And like thank God. Packages, or like you know, when you got home to your family after a hard day, or you know, vacation, or you and went out and about, or you know, or probably some some buy some of the worst things, and you just get to a place where you like, thank God, man, thank you, God, because no, I'm telling you right now, man, to actually know that God is in is is is, is way, 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 way. Then to live a life where you think you're cursed and you don't think God's gonna see you, you don't think God is gonna be there. But He's there. He is there. He is there. And when I say He is there, He will see you through other people's eyes. And, and, and it don't take you, you don't have to be no big movie star, no celebrity. You ain't gotta be none of that. You can be just a little old for you. <laughs> He'll love you, and he'll, and he'll show you that he see you by the part and things that you know that, that exist. And you're like, man, that's beyond my fathom. That's beyond anything I can. That's, I'm not even worth it. Worthy of even thinking a thought like that. But he's like, no, nah, man, don't never put a thought above my creation. Not above the thing that I love. I created you. I love you. And I know there's going to be times where it get hard, but guess what? I do exist. I do exist. And sometimes when you go through hardship, it's just God way of showing you that when you love me, you don't have to love me regardless. Because that's what that's 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 the purest love. Regardless. You're like, what? Yeah, regardless. Like, but you did this regardless. Did it regardless. Cause sometimes when you when you when you do things and you do hurt other people out of love, out of love. Oh look, you you don't really be trying to be so attached to your emotions that you don't want to react. No, you 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 react because it comes from out of love. You like I don't I don't know too many other things except for love that will actually make a person want to um believe in anything in life. Take the love away in your eyes, show you a world that will get cold in an instant. Then you take love away, what you gonna do with God? What you gonna do with God? What you gonna do with Christ? Huh? You, you take love away, it, it doesn't exist. The most mightiest power to ever exist. While man breathes, and lives is love. Why? Because we all wake up not knowing whether we will have oxygen for tomorrow. But guess what? We let tomorrow worry about tomorrow. Because <laughs> we too busy praising God for the day. So that way, that way you can and see what I thought. I didn't never know that with certain fears, you don't have to let them come so close. You got to go dive in them and search in them. No, you can just cut them out. Cut it off and let it be what it is, an illusion for an attempt on your life. An illusion for an attempt on your life. Because in your life, you will have light. When you walk with God, when God actually reveals this, you ain't just uh, walking without purpose. You can walk without knowing. 
but God will reveal itself to you to show you that uh, this is this is the way. And I can only just say when he reveals that this is the way, you, your best bet is to take it. Because <laughs> you it's before destruction comes, you know. We all realize that um, in our life of mistakes and turnarounds, that God does root for the underdog because he knows today that that underdog is going to turn things around and he's going to be used by God to turn other people around and them other people are going to be used by God to turn other people around and them people and together are going to become the body of Christ that, that actually wasn't the body of Christ now is the body of Christ which means you was accepted of the preachers that only spoke about Christ and had a testimony of Christ but once you see the preachers that come to show that the testimony of Christ is still relevant that's a new that's a that's a higher level of conscience that's a higher level of knowing that oh God so real that God still right he still like he say I can raise up dry bones And if you want to see what a drop on, I wanted I wanted representations of that too. Cause if you raise up the dry bone, the dry bone gonna get raised up, and guess what you gonna do? Come back and testify. Testify in Christ. Testify God is real. You're like what? Yeah. And be bold with it. Be bold with it. Testify, cause he know what God done put him through and brought him through. And he know that it only is only because of God. There ain't no, no other power that can exist outside of something we can't comprehend but God. Because we can take all the organizations of this world and God will make them what? Foolish and nothing. Because if he had to need all of those organizations for people to know God, nobody would know him. They're too busy cutting people off and denying access. So God had to exist in a realm where the only ones that actually get to have the glory of knowing him is the ones that truly believe him and, and, and willing to walk with him. Whether they know how to or don't, they're willing to try. You know? And, uh, and I, I tell a person that's, that's a great thing, the will to try willing to try because most people they 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 don't have the will to try no more they have they have the will to deny the will to make fun of the will to embarrass the will to be shameful but the will to try psh, that'll be something on their list but it ain't gonna be something that's first on their list it's gonna be something on last you know that's just, to, to certain people that's bucket list stuff <laughs> you're like what you gonna wait till you die to have a will to try man yeah man like, but thank God that God is real. So keep the faith.